In the scheme of evolution, humans have come a long way. We began with the apes, and we are in a TEDx talk now. Along the way, we've developed tools, languages, culture, education, science, technology, economics, and even politics. Impressive, is it not? Ironically, we've also developed COVID, cancer, and countless other physical and mental ailments. I've been training, mentoring, and counseling aspiring chartered accountants for close to a decade now, and from my infinite interactions with those teens and young adults, I can affirm that much of their anxiety, stress, and depression comes from constantly trying to fit into the success mold of the society. Well, I was no exception. A decade ago, I cracked one of the toughest exams in India, chartered accountancy, only to leave it all behind and plunge into agriculture. Reason, sustainability. For those of you wondering if I'm trying to lure you into replacing your mighty ambitions of becoming an entrepreneur, professional, or bureaucrat with that of becoming a farmer like me, no, far from it. Like I said earlier, besides farming, I am also into speaking, training, mentoring, and counseling, all of which are aimed at helping people thrive. So I am for thriving or flourishing, just that I'd like it to be sustainable. The last 15 years of my life have been nothing but an experiment in sustainability, a desperate attempt to become happy and sustain that happiness. I completed my undergraduation in commerce in 2007, and even before I could come out of the hangover of college, people began grilling me. So, what next? Which university? Big plans, right? And as I stood absolutely clueless, the society thrust its definition of success upon me. Success equals fame plus money. And I naively plunged into the rat race, not realizing then that even if I won the rat race, I would still be a rat. I began frantically hunting for avenues that would make me successful in the eyes of the world. Rich and famous was the mission, sooner the better was the mantra, and pursuing chartered accountancy was the mockery. Without the necessary passion, Pursuing chartered accountancy was incredibly tough. Practicing it, even more so. After a decade of back-breaking efforts, I was a pretty rich, famous, and depressed chartered accountant. I underwent therapy, and during one of those countless therapy sessions, my psychologist asked me, Shandeep, what are you really searching for? What is that one thing you want the most in life? And I found myself meekly replying, I want to be as happy as I was when I was a kid. With a wide grin, he pulled out a paper from the drawer and made me write 10 things I loved doing as a kid. I wrote that list in a jiffy, climbing trees, jumping into the well, racing with my dogs, wrestling with my friends, and the list went on. He then made me write, when was the last time I did each one of those? And as I wrote 10 years ago, 15 years ago, donkey's years ago, on that piece of paper, I began to realize that in my quest to appear as a successful adult on the outside, I had allowed the child in me to die slowly, sadly, and painfully. My psychologist helped me understand that to become happy and sustain that happiness, 
I need to find and live my definition of success. I realized that my definition of success wasn't fame or money, but happiness. I'm choosing my words very carefully here. I'm not saying that fame and money are wrong definitions of success. I'm simply saying that they don't have to be the only definition of success. This piece of wisdom, which I picked in that quaint therapy room that day, changed my life forever, and I'm here with the fond hope that it will change yours too. While I had always known that plants and trees fascinate me more than debits and credits, it is this wisdom that gave me the strength to leap from chartered accountancy to agriculture. It's been a decade since I took the plunge, and today, if you take a list of the richest or the most famous chartered accountants by qualification, I will definitely not be there in that list. But if you take a list of the happiest ones, I will be somewhere on top because I am living my definition of success. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Regardless of which occupation you choose, you are going to be spending over 50% of your waking hours at work. So if you aren't working happily, you aren't living happily. And happiness at work is possible only when you find and live your passion, purpose, or ikigai, as the Japanese call it. The world of psychology in general and positive psychology in particular, proclaims that creativity and productivity can only spring from a happy mind. As a case in point, in the last decade, alongside my farming, I've also earned a master's in applied psychology, a specialization in positive psychology, won a few dozen speech contests conducted by Toastmasters International, trained over 10,000 aspiring chartered accountants, and addressed over a lakh people. Above all, I tap dance to work each day, and I strongly believe that the world is changed not by those who tiptoe to work, but by those who tap dance to work. Friends, I reiterate, if you want to become happy and sustain that happiness, you need to find and live your definition of success. And in this quest, it is not the mountain of external circumstances that would wear you out. It is that tiny pebble in your shoe, that pebble of wanting to please everybody. One fond memory of my alma mater, Good Shepherd International School, is that Outside the dining hall, there was a huge bust of Jesus Christ, and beneath were the words, a man to satisfy everybody is yet to be born. Even those mighty souls couldn't please everybody. So in the process of finding and living your definition of success, it's okay to piss off a few people, even a lot of people. Just tune out the noise of the world and look for what makes you truly happy while also contributing meaningfully to those around you. To summarize, you can find happiness and sustain it only when you live your definition of success. And in that process, please keep the child in you alive. Remember that it is never too late to switch paths. Seek help when needed. And finally, shed that pebble of wanting to please people. Once you have found your definition of success, then it is all about living that definition each day, consciously, passionately, and unapologetically. Life is too special to be lived ordinarily. Tap dance to work, create a blockbuster, and live a fairy tale.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.